combination of two corons that is the blood corons we specify the 16 amino acids or there will be formation of 16 corons if the two two corons will be there doublet coron will be take if there is a formation of 16 more corons and these 16 corons will specify the 20 amino acid here what happens the number of corons are less but the amino acids are more so it is also not possible to specify this 20 amino acid by this 16 codon because here the combination of two codon is there and it will form the 16 codon and this 16 codon will form the 20 amino acid later on it is says that this triplet codon will <coughs> this triplet codon will form the 16 codons and these 16 codons specify the 20 amino acid. That means if we take the codons A, U, G, G, A, C, like this, this triplet codon will, their combination form the 64 codon. And these 64 codons will form the 20 amino acid. They will form the 20 amino acid. So this is about the codon that is the single codon if we take it will form code for the four amino acid if the two codon will be taken into consideration they will form the 64 codon and if the three codons or triplet codon pair taken into consideration they will form the 64 codon and last add this is accepted that 64 codon will specify the 20 amino acid or the code for this 20 amino acid. So all this about this codon that how the triplet codon will specify or will form this 20 amino acid. Now we'll see the contribution of the different scientists regarding this genetic code. That is the Gamow scientist is there, Nirenberg and Matha is there. Then there is one scientist that, that is Dr. Hargovin Khurana is there. All these scientists had made the important contribution in this process of the genetic code. So we will see the contribution of this scientist for the genetic code. And here what happened that first scientist, his name is the Gamow. What Gamow did, what Gamow did, Gamow did that in a codon, in a codon there is see here in a codon there is combination of three nitrogen base that he call as the genetic code and he says that each codon will specify the one amino acid each codon will specify the one amino acid according to the gamma that is in a combination of the three nitrogen bases that three nitrogen bases together call as a genetic code previously we have seen the definition of the genetic code that is it is a language on the mrna stand that we have called as a cryptogram or the genetic code and each genetic code would specify the one amino acid so this is about the contribution of the gamma who told that the genetic code consists of three nitrogen base and each codon will form the one amino acid then the second scientist whose name is Nirene Burger and Matha. Second scientist is here whose name is Niren Burg and Matha. Who first prepared artificial mRNA? Who first prepared artificial mRNA? And on this mRNA, see if it, it is artificial mRNA, on this mRNA, he kept only the one base pair and name of that base pair is the uracil. It is also called as 
the homopolymer. It is homopolymer. What is mean by homopolymer? Homopolymer means the homo means similar and polymer means nucleotide. On this mRNA, there will be similar nucleotide that is the uracil base pair you will find and that mRNA strand he call as a homopolymer. He call it as a homopolymer. So this is about the homopolymer proposed by the Nirenberg and Mathai and he told that he, uh, he prepared the artificial mRNA on that he prepared the homopolymer and that homopolymer later on formed the polypeptide chain. It formed the polypeptide chain and in that polypeptide chain he linked the different types of the amino acid and name of that amino acids are the phenylalanine. In the previous at the starting of this lecture we have discussed that there are 20 amino acids are involved. Some examples we have given and the phenylalanine is one of the amino acid which was discovered by the scientist whose name is Nirenberg and Mathai. How he discovered that? He discovered that U U U U U U is the sequence of the or it is the uh, base pair in combination of these three they form the important amino acid and that is called as the phenylalanine. That amino acid is called as the phenylalanine. So if the question is asked that phenylalanine amino acid is the combination of UUU is first discovered by scientist and then the name of that scientist is the Nirenberg and Mathai who first proposed artificial mRNA in the laboratory. The name is given to this Nirenberg and Mathai. So it is a contribution of the Nirenberg and Mathai who first proposed this artificial mRNA in the laboratory having only uracil base pair on its mRNA that is called as a homopolymer. This homopolymer or this UUU base pair formed the phenylalanine that phenylalanine is linked together and later on formed the polypeptide chain and it is did by the scientist Nirenberg and Mathai. Then next to the Nirenberg and Mathai the another scientist is there who proposed the same type of the contribution and the name of that scientist is the Dr. Hargovin Khurana. Next scientist is Dr. Hargovin Khurana. He also, Dr. Hargovin Khurana, he is also prepared the artificial mRNA. And on this artificial mRNA, he will get the sequence like the CUC. UCU, CUC, UCU. It is a sequence which was found by this Hargovin Khurana on its artificial mRNA. This artificial mRNA by this sequence he get converted it into a polypeptide chain. He get converted it into the polypeptide chain which is nothing but the chain of the protein which is linked by joining this different types of the codons together and they form the polypeptide chain. So the next question is that, if question is asked that the discovery of the sequence UC, CUC or UCU or CUC or UCU is codon who has discovered it then the name is of the Dr. Hargovin Khurana who discovered this codons on this artificial mRNA and he also make the polypeptide chain from this codon. So this is the second scientist who did or who discovered this codon for the synthesis of the polypeptide chain or for synthesis of the protein. And there is the one last scientist whose name is whose name is the Severo Oka. Severo He is the one of the scientists. He is one of the scientists who discovered first the enzyme, and name of that enzyme is the polynucleotide phosphorylase. Name of that enzyme is polynucleotide phosphorylase, which is responsible for the polymerizing 
Ah, les nains. Which is responsible for the polymerizing RNA. So, this enzyme was first discovered by scientist Severo Oka and he found that with the help of this enzyme, he can prepare different types of the RNA that is called as a polymerizing RNA and it was first discovered by the scientist Severo Oka. So, up to this in the genetic code, we have seen the contribution of the different scientists like Crick, then Gamo, Nirenberg and Mathai, then Dr. Hargovin Khurana and the last scientist is the Severoka. So all these scientists are very important for the MCQ point of view. So we should prepare the name and the, their contribution very well for the MCQ point of view. Now the next point of the genetic code is the characteristics of the genetic code. There are about the 9 to 10 characteristics are there which explain the genetic code very well. So now we are going to discuss the different characteristics of this genetic code. So next point is the characteristics of the genetic code. The first characteristics of the genetic code is genetic code is triplet. First characteristic says that genetic code is triplet. That means as we have seen that on the mRNA there will be the genetic code present. If this is the strand of mRNA and on this mRNA strand the genetic code is present in the form of the pair or the combination of the three nitrogen bases. Suppose this is the first codon A, U, G, then C, A, G, then A, C, C. See here, here you will find that there will be combination of these three codons is there on this mRNA strand. That means on the mRNA or if we say on the DNA, there is the genetic code which is present in the triplet form. They are not present in the singlet or doublet form. They will be present in the triplet form. So it is the first characteristics of the genetic code. Then the second characteristics of the genetic code is that this genetic code has polarity. Polarity means it has particular direction. That means as these codons are present on the mRNA, here again we draw the uh, diagram that is this is the direction of the codon. They are present in the direction 5 prime to 3 prime. If we take the example of one codon AUG, this is the codon which is present on this mRNA and it has always read as AUG in the 5 prime to 3 prime direction. If we read it in opposite direction, that is 3 prime to 5 prime, then its meaning will change and it will become G U A. So we have to read this genetic code always in the direction 5 prime to 3 prime. Then and then only you will get the correct code on the or you correct the codon or the after on after all that from codon we will get correct the amino acid. So direction of the codon will be from 5 to 3 only, not 3 to 5. If we read 3 to 5, the meaning of that codon will change and it will become G U A. So second characteristics of the genetic code is that genetic code has always polarity. It cannot read randomly, it always read from 5 prime to 3 prime direction. Then the third characteristics of this codon is it is non-overlapping. Genetic code is always non-overlapping. That means adjacent codons will not overlap over each other. How? Here again we will see the diagram of the mRNA that is this mRNA read 5 prime to 3 prime direction. There are codons like A, U, G, C, G, A, C, A, A. These are the codons on this mRNA strand. And this is that if A, U, G codon is involved for formation of one amino acid. Okay. 
CGA is involved for formation of another amino acid. CA is involved for formation of amino acid, another amino acid. So each codon will specify the particular amino acid. Each codon will specify the particular amino acid. But here not happen that AUG from the one codon and later on G codon from AUG is involved for formation of the other codon. Okay, AUG codon is involved for the formation of one amino acid only. From the AUG, the G nitrogen base is not involved for the formation of the another codon. So these codons are not overlapping. Each codon will specify its particular amino acid. Here you will not find that this G is involved in the formation of another codon. Okay, or this A is involved in the formation of the another codon. So they are the non-overlapping codons. And the fourth characteristics which is always related to this non-overlapping characteristics that is genetic codes are formalis. Fourth characteristics is genetic code are formalis. What is the meaning of this genetic code is formalis? See here. There is no punctuation, no gap or no space between the successive codon. See again here. This is the diagram of the RNA strand. On this RNA strand, there are the codons A, U, G, C, A, C, G, A, C. If you find the space between these two codons, the space between A, U, U, AU is the same you will find it in between GC. The space between AC, the same space you will find in between the CJ. That means each codon, after each codon, there will be no space or no gap. If you see the gap will be fine, then the structure will be seen like this. A, U, G. After some gap, there will be C, A, C. Such a space between two codons you will not find on the mRNA strand. So, this characteristic says that genetic codes are always commonless. There is no gap between these two codons. All the codons are placed uniformly, equally on the mRNA strand. So, this is the fourth characteristic which explains that genetic codes are the commonless. There is no gap, no space between the two codons or between the addition codon. Then the next property is that this genetic code has degeneracy. Genetic code has degeneracy. That means as we know that there are as we know that there are 20 amino acid and 64 codons will be there. See here 64 codons we code for 20 amino acids. Then what will happen here? The number of amino acids are less as compared to the number of the codon. So codons will be more and amino acid will be less. So there is a possibility that some amino acids are coded by more than one codon. See here, there is always what happens some Times for some amino acid, one codon specifies one amino acid. It is a normal thing. That is, that there are number of amino acid. We have seen the name of that amino acid. There is possibility that sometimes one amino acid is coded by only one codon. For example, here we will see AUG. AUG. It is a one codon which form or which specify one amino acid and that is called as a methionin. Methionin is an amino acid which is coded by only one codon and that is the AUG codon. Methionin is not coded by another codon, only AUG that is the only one codon specify or code only one amino acid and that is the methionin. But there are some amino acids which are coded by more than one codon. For example, the amino acid 16. Amino acid 16 is coded by two codons. Or amino acid isoleucine. 
is coded by three quorums. So what will be happen here? That is not only one quorum will specify or code for one amino acid. More than quorum are also responsible for coding that particular amino acid. For example, AUG is the one quorum which code for the methionine. There are two quorums which are involved for the coding of the cysteine. There are three quorums which are responsible for the coding of the isoleucine. That means there will be possibility that some amino acid will be coded more than one quorum because the quorums are already more in number than the amino acid. So it is a possibility that if one quorum or you know, what is the degeneracy if the question is asked that what is the degeneracy of the genetic code then you have to write that if any amino acid is coded by more than one quorum then it is called as the degeneracy of the genetic code then it is called as the degeneracy of the genetic code so this is about the fifth characteristics that is the degeneracy of the genetic code and it explains that how more than one quorum specify or form the one amino acid then sixth property is that genetic code genetic code is universal sixth property is that genetic code is universal what is mean by universal? Genetic code is universal means that from bacteria to the human being in all organism you will find the same type of the genetic code. For example, if we take the example of the AUG codon, this AUG codon will code the amino acid methionine. The amino acid methionine, all the bacteria, in all the plants, in all the animals including the human being. So genetic code is not different. If there are bacteria which are the primitive one, viruses which are the primitive one, they do not have the AUG for methionine. No, in every case, in every organism, you will find that AUG code on codes for the methionine amino acid. It may be bacteria, it may be fungi, it may be plant, it may be animal, or it may be human being. So in every organism, you will get same type of genetic code, same type of amino acid. 20 amino acid will be there, which are involved in the process of protein synthesis and for that 20 amino acid there will be involvement of the 64 codon and it happens in all the living organisms. So this characteristics explain that genetic code is universal in every living organism. It not differs from organism to organism because it has only one point that is it is universal. And the last point we see here that the genetics code is not ambiguous. See here, genetic code is not ambiguous. What is mean by it? Here, the meaning of it is that, meaning of it is that, that is, says that the two different, two different Amino acids are not coded by same codon. Okay, what is mean by genetic code is non-ambiguous. Genetic code is non-ambiguous. That means two different amino acids are not coded by the same amino acid. That is means the one codon will form only one amino acid. That codon which form the one amino acid is not involved in the formation of the another amino acid. The meaning is that two different amino acids are not coded by the same codon. For example, leucine amino acid is there, isoleucine is there. This leucine and isoleucine is a, are not coded by one codon. Leucine is coded by different codon, isoleucine is coded by different codon. For example, if you take the example that is UUU, this UUU codon codes for the amino acid phenylalanine. It codes for the amino acid phenylalanine. But this UUU code do not code for isoleucine. 
with only code for one amino acid and the name of that amino acid is the phenyl alanine. It do not code the amino acid isolation. It is the property of the genetic code that is which is non ambiguous. But one exception is there. Which one that? That is number of time I have told you that uh, exception of the non ambiguous. Now we are discussing. Have you get this point? That is the genetic code is non ambiguous. And that means two different codon cannot be code of the same amino acid. One example is given here. That is. U U U is code on for the phenylalanine. It do not code for the isolation. It only codes for the phenylalanine. This is the property of the non-ambiguous. And one exception of this, which is not given in our textbook, is discussing now here. That is, which is the exception to this non-ambiguous property of the genetic code. This is the last point of this lecture. That is, here you will see that A U G in the next. Lecture in the next general property, we will discuss what is meant by initiation codon and what is meant by the termination codon. But here you will find that here AUG is the codon which codes for the methionine, and methionine is the first amino acid which should be formed in the protein synthesis. In every protein chain, in every polypeptide chain, the first protein which will form or the first amino acid which will form the protein will be methionine. Okay, but if on the mRNA strand this AUG is not available, then instead of that AUG, another codon will be there that is called as the GUG. This GUG form the methionine. What I am saying that AUG is the initiation codon on the mRNA. It is involved in the formation of methionine because in every polypeptide chain the first amino acid should be methionine. But in any case, on mRNA, if AUG is not present, then instead of AUG, GUG work and that GUG form the first amino acid methionine. But originally, GUG produce the valine amino acid. Originally, the GUG produce the valine amino acid, but it has to play the role of initiation codon. So instead of valine, it prepares the methionine, and it is the exceptional property for non-ambiguous property of the genetic code. That is, when AUG was absent, or sorry, when AUG is absent, this GUG takes place of the AUG, and it works. The formation of methionine, which originally formed by this AUG, this GUG formed the methionine, but originally GUG is not involved in the formation of methionine. It is involved in the formation of valine. So this is the exception property of this genetic code. Now see here, which properties we have discussed. That is, first one is that genetic code is a triplet one. Second one is genetic code is non-overlapping. Third one, genetic code has a polarity. Fourth one, genetic code is a comma-less or without any punctuation space. Next, genetic code is a universal. And the last property is that genetic code is non-ambiguous. Some of the properties are remaining that we will discuss in the next lecture. But here, these properties are very important for the theory point of view. So before studying these characteristics of the genetic code, we should know what is meant by genetic code. Then we scientists made an important contribution for the discovery of this genetic code. Then how this is genetic code going to form the triplet codon, how each codon will specify one particular amino acid that are very important for the study of this genetic code. So the next properties of the genetic code we will see in the next lecture. So this lecture is very important for the studying the transcription and translation because the transcription, genetic code and the translation, these three points are very important because they are interlinked with each other. You should know first clearly what is meant by transcription, then you should study the genetic code and then last you should know the translation process. These are three interlinking points. Some characteristics are remain that we will see in the next lecture. Hello students. Today we are going to start the new point from this molecular basis of inheritance and that is the genetic code. So first we have to see what is meant by genetic code. Before that we will discuss some introductory part which are related to this genetic code. Genetic code means that here if we see this DNA, 
DNA is called as the master molecule of the cell. It is called as the master molecule of cell. Why it is called as a master molecule of cell? Because it regulates, it controls or it guides the process of protein synthesis. What I am saying that this DNA molecule which is called as a master molecule of the cell, it regulates, it controls or it guides the process of protein synthesis. Then you know that in the previous lecture we have seen that in the process of protein synthesis there is a direct role of the DNA. How? For protein synthesis, this DNA first formed the mRNA by the process of transcription and this mRNA by the process of translation from the protein. So protein synthesis is under the control of this DNA molecule. So we call it as a master molecule of the cell. Now this DNA molecule carries the required information for the protein synthesis and it or that information which carry for the protein synthesis by the DNA molecule, that information is stored in DNA itself. That means for protein synthesis, information is carried by DNA and that information is stored in the DNA molecule itself and it is present in its nucleotide. It is present in its nucleotides, which we also call as the nitrogen base. Okay, so information for protein synthesis is present in the DNA and where it is present in its nucleotide and one of the major component of the nucleotide is its nitrogen bases. In that nitrogen bases, this information is stored. Now, you are well known about the nitrogen bases. Which nitrogen bases are present in DNA, adenine, thymine, guanine and cytosine? So, A adenine, E, thymine, G, guanine and C, cytosine. These are the four nitrogen bases which we will find in the DNA molecule as a nitrogen bases. But see here, these nitrogen bases which are present on the DNA, they are transcribed first on the mRNA. Okay, the information which is present on the DNA, this information is not given in a state board. So, number of students get confused that where actually codons are present. These codons are present no doubt on the DNA, but these codons from the DNA get transcribed on the mRNA. So, in simple word, we say that codons are found on the mRNA. But how this codon get transferred on mRNA? By the process of transcription that we have already learned in previous lectures. So, these are the nitrogen bases which are present on the DNA. They get transcribed on the mRNA and then the information on the mRNA we call it as a codon. So, how get it transferred? As you know, A always pair with the T but you know in mRNA or in any type of RNA, thymine is not present. Instead of that, there is a uracil. So, here you will find the U. As it is T, here you will find the A. As it is G, here you will find the C. And as it is C, here you will find the G. So such a type of the codon transformation takes place from the DNA to RNA. And so you will find here that the information for the protein synthesis is present on the DNA. That information from DNA get transformed into the mRNA. And then mRNA carry this information for the synthesis of protein to work the ribosome. Why ribosome? Because we know that a ribosome is the protein machinery where the different types of proteins are formed. Okay, so it is the main thing that how the DNA acts as a master molecule of protein synthesis. It acts as a master molecule by giving its information for protein synthesis first into the mRNA from the mRNA this information get transformed to the ribosome and in where in that ribosome cell organelle there will be formation of the protein now we have to see that how these protein molecules are formed as all of you are known that these proteins are formed from the amino acid 
the proteins are formed from the amino acid. So, these amino acids are the basic molecules for the protein synthesis. So, there are about 20 amino acids. How many amino acids are involved in the process of protein synthesis? There are about 20 amino acids that are there which are involved in the synthesis of protein. There is no need to you uh, know that all the names of the 20 amino acids, but you should know which are the amino acids. For example, see here some amino acid name I am going to tell you that is these amino acids are involved in the process of protein synthesis. For example, phenylalanine, serine, leucine, valine, tyrosine, aspartic acid, glutamic acid, methionine, isoleucine. Are there a number of amino acids? Some of the example of amino acid I have given here. Nearly 20 amino acids are there which are going to form the different types of the proteins in our body. Now, these 20 amino acids first form or coded by the codons. What I am going to tell you that these 20 amino acids are first form or get coded by the nitrogen base or the information of the DNA which is stored in the nucleotide. Now here we are going to discuss the codons on mRNA. So as the DNA has the four nitrogen bases, also RNA has the four nitrogen bases. So here I am saying that these four types of four types of nitrogen bases. These four types of nitrogen bases form the this four type of nitrogen bases form the 20 amino acids or in other words we say that this four type of the nitrogen bases form the 20 or code the 20 amino acids now how it is possible there are only four nitrogen bases which are the nitrogen bases now think here we are always Telling the nitrogen bases on the RNA. So, A, adenine, then U, uracil, then G, guanine, and B, C, cytosine. A, U, G, C, adenine, uracil, guanine, and cytosine. These four nitrogen bases are involved in the coding of this 20 amino acid. Now, how it is possible? Whether it is possible that only four types of nitrogen base will code or will form 20 amino acid. For this, there is a lot of information is given by different scientists and that we are going to study now. That means Crick, Gamo, Harbunin, Kurana, then Nirenberg and Mathai. Different scientists gave its own explanation about this genetic code. But up to this, you should know that the protein synthesis is under the control of the DNA molecule. For that, DNA first forms the mRNA. mRNA then goes to the ribosome, and the all information on the mRNA is present is in the form of codon, and that information mRNA use deliver to the ribosome for the protein synthesis. So in simple word, I will first draw here the diagram of mRNA and how we will see that how the codons are present on the mRNA in the triplet form. So for that here we will see first the diagram of this mRNA. So here I will write or I will sketch the diagram of mRNA. Here mRNA is always in in the straight form, okay? It is always read as 5 prime to the 3 prime. And on this mRNA, you will see that there are three nitrogen bases are present, and these three nitrogen bases form the codon. Okay, so this is the first nitrogen base. This one is second, this one is third, this one is fourth, this one is the fifth. Such a that, for example, a, U, G, these three nitrogen bases form the one codon. Then G, U, C, then C, A, G, then A, C, G, then U, A, A. See here, I am not written here the T because thyme is not present in the RNA instead of thymine, this presence of the urea seed. So what is that? There are four nitrogen bases. A, U, G, C. But out of these four nitrogen bases, 
three nitrogen bases come together and they form the one coron. Three nitrogen bases come together, they form the other coron. Three nitrogen bases come together, they form one coron. Three nitrogen bases come together, they form one coron. That means the nitrogen base make a group of three, and that particular group of three nitrogen base we call it as a coron. So here, first of, I will write the definition of the coron. What is coron? So see here, what is coron? The sequence of in your textbook, the word is given as consecutive. Consecutive means excellent. Put like that, no, anti in our syllabus. So, for example, one, two, three, four. These are the consecutive numbers. Like that, three nitrogen bases or the three consecutive nitrogen bases or the sequence of three nitrogen bases on mRNA. In textbook, the definition is not clearly given. So, what is the definition of coron? The sequence of three nitrogen bases on mRNA is called coron. Okay, and here you will find that how these corons are present on this mRNA, and these corons actually going to form the amino acid. Twenty different types of amino acid. For example, this AUG coron form one amino acid. UGC coron form second amino acid. CAG coron form the third amino acid. ACG coron form the fourth amino acid. Like that, each coron on the mRNA form a particular amino acid. Thus, from the coron of the mRNA, twenty different types of amino acids are formed, and then, and then these twenty amino acids get play a role in the protein synthesis. But before that, we should know the assumption or the Hypothesis, or we say that the theory of the Cree, Nuremberg, Gamma, or Harbovin, Kunara, and they try first that which nitrogen base, whether it is single nitrogen base, a doublet nitrogen base, or triplet nitrogen base, will form the different coron. So we'll see first uh, the different theories, and then we will discuss later on the properties of this genetic code. So up to this, everyone should know what is meant by coron. That means the three sequence of the nitrogen bases on mRNA is called as codon. And what is the role of codon? Here I will write this thing that is each codon specify one amino acid. Each codon specify one amino acid. Every codon will now form the one amino acid. So two words are very important. What is meant by codon and function of the codon? That every codon on the mRNA are involved in the coding of particular amino acid. Okay, this is about the codon and where it is present on the mRNA strand. Now we will discuss next point that first scientist whose name is Crick. Crick, that is, a, it is a, one of the scientists from the pair, Watson and Crick, who discovered the model of replication, who discovered the double helical model of the DNA. That Crick first time shows that the information for the protein synthesis is stored in the form of codon. Information for the protein synthesis we store in the form of codon and that information we call as a cryptogram. What is meant by cryptogram? Cryptogram means coding language. Which is also called as a genetic code. Okay? There will be question asked that who first gives uh, the coded language or cryptogram of the genetic term. Then answer of that is the creep. That scientist creep for sure that the information for protein synthesis is present in the form of genetic code. It is present in the form of codon. It is present in the form of cryptogram. 
सो इफ द क्वेश्चन इज आस फॉर एम सी टू फॉर एनी सिस्टम फोर ऑन टू प्रोग्राम फोर एन लाइन बाइट ऑन द जेनेटिक कोड देन यू हैव टू डू दंसर ऑफ साइंटिस्ट क्रिप सो ही फर्स्ट शो दैट इट इज इन द फॉर्म ऑफ क्रिप्टोग्राम ओके देन वी सी दैट नेक्स्ट पॉइंट टू इट इज दैट डिफरेंट साइंटिस्ट गिव the expression that how this codon are form the 20 type of amino acid up to this we have seen that the cryptogam is also called as a genetic language it is also called as a genetic code which is present first on dna then get transfer on the rna and cryp this code is genetic information is responsible for the protein synthesis now we'll see how many codons are in all in the formation of this amino acid so first term, there is expression that there is expression that singlet codon singlet codon that is mean by single codon of four nitrogen base singlet codon or single codon of four nitrogen base will encode or will form 20 amino acid will form 20 amino acids now how it is happen see here there are four nitrogen bases or if we consider a u g c these are the four nitrogen bases according to this hypothesis single codon if form the so 20 amino acid or there will be expression that the single codon will form the amino acid then how many amino acid will form there only four amino acids because one codon form one amino acid second codon form second amino acid third codon form third amino acid fourth codon form four amino acid four codons are there only so this four codons form only four amino acid but we have to form 20 amino acid so this principle is not accepted that is single codon will not specify the 20 amino acid they will form only the four amino acid because four Bases are there. If one base is considered as a one codon, then it will form only four or four this nitrogen base. Four codon form the only four amino acid. Now the second hypothesis is that that is combination of the two codon that we call as a doublet codon. Doublet codon. 